LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors is my sixth ranked player in the 2024 draft class, my second ranked receiver. When I stack up this receiver class, to me, Marvin Harrison Jr. is in a tier of his own at the top, and then Malik Neighbors is in a tier of his own right behind him. He's listed at six foot flat, 201 pounds, 86 receptions, 1,545 yards, and 14 touchdowns in the regular season. He led power five receivers with 3.81 yards per route run, and I think in most receiver classes, where there isn't a prospect like Marvin Harrison Jr., he's your clear no-brainer number one receiver. Malik Neighbors' biggest strength and the reason he's going to be a top 10 pick in my opinion is his fluidity and ability to separate. He didn't run the most diverse route tree in LSU's offense. It was mainly stop routes, double moves, and go routes, but just projecting the movement skills and the change of direction, I think he could run the entire route tree at a high level. He can stop on a dime one or two steps and he cuts off any route on the vertical plane, just an effortless ability to sink his hips and create separation on curls and comebacks. On a similar note, he runs some of the best double moves that you'll see for a receiver prospect. He ranked second in college football with 213 yards off of double moves this season, and he does a great job on these vertical routes of accelerating to attack the defender's blind spot, and then without pushing off, he uses his hands to release contact and get them out of phase. When he does run more horizontal breaking routes, there's no stall in his breaks or transition. To me, he projects as an elite route runner at the NFL level. The change of direction and hip fluidity is reminiscent of Antonio Brown. I think he has really good speed down the field. Probably not going to be like a 4-3 kind of guy, but as long as you're at least in the 4-4-5, even like 4-5 flat range, you can get by as a deep threat in the NFL. As we've seen historically, once you get into the 4-3s, there's kind of a point of diminishing returns. But I have no concerns about his ability to win over the top. He's really good about 5-7. to seven yards into a vertical route of changing gears immediately stacking the corner he can win at the line of scrimmage and then just turn on the jets get that two or three yards of separation to tell the quarterback that he's open and i think he can be a player that wins at all three levels he ran 54 percent of his routes from the slot but i think he could play on the outside in the nfl he's really good using that shoulder dip move at the line of scrimmage to give press corners a small target and just kind of lean underneath their punch and he covers space in short areas so quickly even though he he does kind of have a smaller frame. He can get himself out of range to be jammed really fast, so I don't have too many concerns about him beating press at the next level. He will need to continue to refine that release package. I'd like to see him do a little bit more with his footwork at the line of scrimmage, but I don't think he's a player that's going to have too many issues beating press. And then he's extremely dynamic after the catch. He's got the short area quickness to make the first defender miss. He eats up open space. He can just outrun the entire defense. He can avoid tackles without losing any of his momentum. Him. This year, he ranked third among college football receivers with 30 missed tackles forced. It seems like everyone gets compared to Debo Samuel nowadays. He's not Debo Samuel. He's not one of these receivers in a running back body that's just going to power through tackle attempts, but he's a player that's going to get open consistently and then maximize his production after the catch. For the most part, he has pretty reliable hands, five drops, 5.5% drop rate. That's in the range of not perfect, but not necessarily something you worry too much about. He was 10 of 21 on contested catches this year he flashed some premier focus and ball tracking ability at the catch point but there were times he got boxed out by physical corners and I think against the 6-2 press corners that pretty much every NFL team has he could have some issues winning in those contested catch situations so Malik Neighbors sixth ranked player overall I have a true top five grade on him which the grades are independent of the rest of the class so that's saying in an average draft class he's worth a top five pick my NFL comparison for him is Garrett Wilson Wilson. I feel really good about that. The route running, ball skills, what he can do after the catch, I think lines up pretty close. And comparing him to the rest of this receiver class outside of Marvin Harrison, I do think he's in a tier of his own. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.